In the last example of the previous clip, we have observed that the initial state of where the Markov chain starts can matter, and that in some cases the influence of the initial state never vanishes in the long run. So when we wanted to calculate the probability of ending up in state 1, knowing that you started in state 1 gave you that probability, and if you started in state 3, you had another long-term probability and in case you were started in state 2 then you were equally likely to end up in being in state 1 or in state 3. We have said that this was due to the fact that some states are not accessible from some other states. Our goal here is to make such a statement more precise and formal. In order to do so, we will classify the states of a Markov chain in a transition diagram into two types, recurrent and transient. The state is said to be recurrent if starting from that state, no matter where you go, there is always a path to come back. A state is said to be transient if it is not recurrent. It means that starting from that state there is at least one place where you can go and then there will be no path back to it. For example, starting from state 8, no matter where you go, there is always a path back to 8. So 8 will be said to be a recurrent state. For the same reason, 7 will also be a recurrent state as well as 6. Now, what about 5? From 5, the only state where you can go to is 5 itself. So 5 is also a recurrent state. Let us look now at a state like state 4. From 4, there is the possibility of a path going through 2, then 1, and then going to 5, from which there is no path back to 4. So 4 cannot be a recurrent state. It is then called a transient state. For the same reason, starting from 3, there is the possibility that after doing many transition around here, eventually you will end up being in either 2 and then go to 6, or you will be eventually be in 1 and then go to 5. And from 5 or from 6, there will be no path back to 3. So 3 is also a transient state. And it is clear that for the same reason, 1 will be a transient state and 2 will also be a transient state. Now, if a state is transient, like 3, 4, or 1, or 2, it means that it will be visited only a finite number of times. And in the long run, the probability of being in a transient state will converge to zero. The recurrent states of a Markov chain can be grouped in different classes. Here, in this example, we have two such classes. Here, this is one class, and here you have another class. What is so special about these classes? Well, within one class, like for example in this class, all recurrent states have a way to communicate between each other but there is no communication between recurrent states of different classes. From that recurrent state here, you have no communication with that recurrent state here. No communication in the sense that there is no path joining that state to that state or that state to that state. The existence of more than one class of recurrent states, like in this example, 
in a Markov chain will be the telling sign that initial states will matter in that chain. It's pretty clear here that if your Markov chain starts in state 5, you will never end up in states 6, 7, or 8. And if you start in one of the states 6, 7, 8, you will never end up in state 5. So depending on where you started, the long-range probability of being eventually in state 6 will not be the same.